can get to work on rebuilding it. Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns Hobbies and today we're going to take a look at the X-Max and in particular the rear differential. So what I'm going to do is remove it from the car, we're going to clean it, I'm going to re-race the diff itself uh, in the gearbox casing um, and I'm going to disassemble the differential, um, check the status of the lubrication and yeah, clean it out and re-oil it well refill it up with oil so and i'm actually going to go a heavier diff oil than they recommend so without further ado let's get stuck into it so we'll start by taking off the body get that out of the way then i'll whip the back wheels off excuse me it's pretty big this this unit get these wheels out of the way should make life a bit easier for us to get the out drives themselves out. We'll get this wheel off here. You can see here that they use a nice amount of Loctite on these wheels. Now this truck in particular has done plenty, plenty of work. And that's why I'm taking the, the, the steps necessary here just to service it and keep on top of the maintenance. Keep it performing its best. There we go wheels off okay now i'm going to take off the the rear bumper bar and support mount and for that hopefully i've just got my nine steps hex wrench here two and a half mil shouldn't have to do too many screws on this car it's going to be the first time for me actually doing this one but yeah the the traxxas manual is actually a great resource in, in helping you do that. All right, so we've got that one, we've got this one. Now I can flip it upside down and come from underneath. Like so, such a big unit. They actually make it really, really good to work on these cars, considering the size and the shape. Now you can see that I've got my, my little screw containers out, and that's gonna help me when I come to reassemble get all the screws back in the right place. And of course, if I do manage to forget or uncertain, I can always refer to the Traxxas manual that you can get online. Okay. Take off this bottom skid plate. Okay, so that's the wheelie bar and bumper, wheelie bar bumper assembly and bottom skid plate off. Now, should be just a matter of flipping the car back over and I can actually use the wheels here to, to prop up the car. And now, before I go any further, I'm just gonna brush off some of the excess dirt because we don't wanna introduce any dirt or debris into the gearbox if we can help it. Then I've got five screws here to get off. Again, this is my two and a half mil Allen key. Get this unscrewed. Get this rear gearbox cover off. get in here like so and then it should be as simple as sliding the rear diff at the back of the car and this has never been unassembled since the factory and this car this truck here is a couple years old and it has done plenty of work this one here so you can see I'm just sort of taking my time I don't necessarily like to use power tools on my cars never usually in that much of a rush that I need to use a power drill get a better feel definitely don't damage the, the screws okay so now the cover can come out of the back like so there we have it and we reveal our differential now this is what we're actually going to service today so i'm going to just as simple as sliding it out the back like so and this here we have the rear differential that we're going to rebuild so what i'll do now is i'll pop the car out of the way and get to work on rebuilding it okay guys so we've got the diff out 
Now what I'm going to do is I've got a little container here and that's just a simple cleaning fluid here of methylated spirits or white spirits. I've got an old brush here. So I'm going to set about rebuilding the differential. So I'm going to start by cleaning it down because the last thing I want to do is introduce any more dirt and muck into the into the transmission that I'm trying to now usually I wouldn't submerge bearings in in this but I'm actually going to change these bearings while I'm here I'm going to re-race the the out driver to diff I feel that these bearings have done plenty of work and due for a, a refresh bit of a bigger brush here give it a wipe over got my uh, nine steps gizmo tool here and like I said just getting all the, the crud and the mess away the reason that I like to use methylated spirits is because it evaporates really well leaves behind really no no traces of it ever being used and um, is really safe on the plastics so get all this grease off there it's good to see actually that the the diff itself does still have a really nice action. Just breaking down all those years of grease and crud out of here. And it's especially important to to service your gearboxes front and rear if you've been submerging your, your X-Max or got it really wet. You really want to make sure that these gears are in good clean condition and you want to try and service them and, and repair them before they actually completely fail and leave you with a broken, broken truck. Here we go, cleaning off all the And that should make the workspace nice and clean too. That we've got here. Our drives are actually still in pretty good condition on this truck. I really am surprised by the endurance and how robust this X Max is for exactly what we um what we do with it and the punishment that it cops. Okay. That is really good, so I can set that off to the side now. Try not to slop it everywhere. And even if you do, it's pretty. Now obviously that is a, a dangerous and flammable chemical, so I'm not gonna, that comes using this comes obviously with a lot of safety and warnings that I'm not about to get into, but you have been warned. Otherwise use a water-based detergent to get it all off and clean. Here we go. Look at that. And we can see here that we've got no damage on the teeth and that we've had a really good mesh, which is what I like to see. And then we can set about getting the diff apart. Okay. So I've got my two and a half mil here. perfect clearance for the bearing like so four screws here and then the case should come apart I'll be really interested to see what the fluid inside the diff looks like after the the punishment and the abuse that this truck has had. Nice big meaty screws here. It's half the reason why the truck is so good is they do such good fasteners in their stuff, Traxxas. Okay, coming now to the last screw. I 
and I'm holding it all together, making sure nothing falls apart. Okay, now we should be able to take the crown wheel off and let's have a look in there. So what we're greeted with is definitely not enough fluid in there so it probably has some escaped over the time so I'm really glad that we've taken this time to service it because you really want to see that differential quite submerged in the oil itself. So I'm going to get my rag here again and lay the parts out as they come. First cross pin, second cross pin. I'm going to try and leave the gasket there and intact. Still doing a really good job. The gear should come away. Just like so. Need to get something in there to lift the gear off. Okay, so here we can see the cross pins and the gears here. Really clever system that Traxxas uses to keep it all in place. And then again, we'll just put this in the bath, give all these gears a clean off. Not a glamorous job, rebuilding diffs and gearboxes, but one that you can take a lot of pride in doing right, and it will pay you back with ha better handling characteristic characteristics, excuse me, and good reliability. And there's no need to rinse any of these parts off after this because it does evaporate really quickly. Okay, that's too clean. Clean up this shim. Like so. Last one. Oh, so I've got another cross pin to do. Okay, guys, so here we have our clean and completely disassembled differential. Now I've got all the parts laid out. I can get rid of this. Now you can see here each and every part has been spotlessly cleaned. And that's what we want when we assemble it. So, now I pretty much do it in the reverse order that it was. Um, however, I use different kinds of grease. So I've got an O-ring grease here. This from XTR. I've got a lithium grease here, which is really good. And I've got a copper grease here, which I'll use at the end on the gear mesh. Okay, so let's start with the reassembly. And like I said, do it in the reverse order. I'm going to start by using the rubber grease on the O-ring. Um, now the reason I do that is just to ensure to protect the, the O-ring, well it's actually like a, a W-ring on this thing, uh, protect the W-ring against the silicon oil itself because that will cause it to swell. So put lots of grease on here and that will help seal, give us a positive seal in the case. All right, so that's going to slip in there. Like so. And then we have new bearings. Now that's from my the X-Max bearing kit. Now it just pays to do that, especially after I've had it all apart in um, 
in the metho and stuff to clean it all up. So new bearings will ensure that it will last a long time. Then I'm going to go ahead and use a bit of the, the white grease here, which is really good for metal to metal contact. And that will help seal nicely as well. Go ahead, slot that together like so. Now it's a matter of lock tighting the out drive on. And for that, I need my Loctite. We might get rid of that scrunching, what do you reckon? <sighs> Loctite beach. Hey Brett, you think you've got the factors slightly incorrectly. Uh, you've got 6 of 11 of 115.833. You've got, you got 6 of these instead of 4. I've got six. Yeah. And it's okay. going to be four. Yep. And what are these ones? Eight three fives. Exactly. I've forgotten the eight three fives. There's the eight three That's an eight three five. That one's. Yep. So there's. Maybe there's an eight three five in here. Eight three three. Eight three three. Eight three five. Ah. They are see? Right. <laughs> so you can put it together, rebundle it. Yeah, gotcha. All right. No, just... no, that's all right. Good on you for double checking. If I've done it, it does definitely need to be double checked, mate. <laughs> what a nonce. It's bloody amateur hour. I have lost. I know, that's what I'm saying. Exactly what I'm saying, BJ. I fixed the octane with it. I've got the parts tray. Where the hell did I put? Okie dokes. If in doubt, let's find another one. Right, so I've got my Loctite. And what I'll do here with the Loctite is I'll actually just put a few drops down onto my work mat, like so. Got my two and a half mil driver here. Nine steps one. Make sure the head's nice and clean and it's going to fit in nice. Put that into the Loctite like so, get a nice little drop on there and then I'll proceed to do up the out drive. Now for this I'm going to use, obviously it's going to try and spin, for this I'm going to use, just tighten it up, spin it a bit, tighten it up. Now I can know that because I've packed it with grease that that, that seal is not going to be catching on anything. I've got my shock pliers here, I'm going to grab the out drive so I can apply a bit more torque, like so. Keep turning it, making sure that nothing's binding. Right, that's nice and firm. And that is super smooth. Great work. I'll wipe off the excess with my rag here that's getting Dirtier and dirtier every step. There we go. So I've got O-ring grease on the O-ring. I've got a bit of lithium grease on the outdrive mating surface. And then a little bit of Loctite on the outdrive retaining screw. Okay, that's one half of the diff assembled. The second half. Okay, so now we go back to our O-ring grease like so to put it onto the metal part ensuring that it doesn't nick or scratch it and then I'll put it on the rubber part itself like so 
I tend to probably use a little bit too much because I figure that it will always just squeeze out of the way like so nice little aid again I will be replacing the bearings so we've got our Hearns Hobbies bearing kit here which I'm going to put on rubber sealed replace over the crunchy old old one put that on the diff case go ahead and assemble my my gear sit that in the casing all nice like so then I can go ahead with the, the lithium grease like so put it on the out drive like so then the Loctite on the two and a half mil that's going to ensure that nothing rattles loose Again, tightening it down, just step by step, making sure that it's all going together smooth. Got my shock pliers on here. Like so, nice and tight. Wipe off the excess and we can get to the good part of actually assembling the differential and filling it with oil because they are an oil filled diff in these now this factory specification is for 30 30,000 weight oil had 30,000 in the rear and 10,000 in the front however we are going to amend that a little bit so here we have a 60 weight a 60,000 weight oil in front that's from XTR and that's what I'm going to use in the differential it does come with a factory supplied 10,000 weight uh, sorry 30,000 weight the specification in the rear and 10,000 in the front however after driving it numerous times I'm actually going to change the oil a little bit to alter the handling characteristics so I'm going to bump the rear up to 60k so I start by putting the I don't put all the oil in at once but I like to put it in where the cross pins are going to sit. So we'll put in four, four bits like that. Then we can assemble our cross pins and our spider gears. Got a handy little shock holder here. Um, there's no need to necessarily lubricate these gears because they will be fully submerged. We've got our shims on here and we can put our first cross pin in like so get that in get that to mesh or maybe not hang on okay like so all right so put that in there and you want to give it a little rotate at every step make sure that the recess in the pin is in fact facing upwards because that's where the next pin is going to sit now go ahead and i'll put more oil in a little bit step by step like so let that sit go ahead and assemble the second diff cross pin here okay now this time I want the, the cross pin recess if we can see it there to be facing down so it sits correctly on top of the other pin put that one in there we go and again we'll give it a little make sure it's all nicely meshed and sitting in the housing properly we can see now give it a wipe over it's super tacky 60,000 now one thing that you want to ensure is that you do not get this into your screw holes because on most most diffs this one included it's a blank hole and if the, the diff oil goes in there and you try and tighten down the crown gear 
you'll just strip the screw because the oil has nowhere to go and definitely can't come out. Okay. So we've got that all nicely covered. Probably put a touch too much in there. Just get my finger in there and wipe that out. Like so. It is pretty messy stuff. So we just want to cover the cross pins on that. So I'm just taking it out, just using my finger to sort of take it, take the excess out. I'm actually pushing it into the crevices. There we go. That is the perfect amount. The other way you can do it, of course, is weigh it. And the last step that I'm going to use is a slight bit of Vaseline here. Uh, where's my gizmo? Now all this grease is going to do, this last, this last style of grease is actually just going to help the gasket seal because we want to make sure all that work that we've done doesn't go to waste. Now I'm pretty confident in reusing this gasket because it was not damaged or cracked or anything like that. But if it is damaged or cracked, please change it. Otherwise all this oil will just come out and you've undone all your hard work. Okay, so that one is on. Now it's a matter of just marrying the two cases, the locating pins and getting the diff back together like so just doing it very gently again just moving it making sure that everything is all lined up now i can just put the screws back in and i won't be putting them in all at the one time i'll be getting them started Like so. Just get them, get them all in and started. Pulling down, making sure all the threads have taken. Make sure that none of the oil, in case you've overfilled it, is going to squeeze out into the, the, the bolt holes because that will ruin our assembly. And then we can go ahead and screw them down one at a time. You want to use equal torque across the crown gear like so and like I said this is quite a fundamental service procedure and if you've had your x max for say over 20 or 50 battery packs you probably want to be doing the same thing to ensure you keep it in the best condition possible okay now just going around tightening them up across the face of the gear I'm just going to get them all down just to take up the slack and make sure that it's pulled down straight like so and then I'm going to operate the gear operate the diff assembly to ensure that we've got a nice smooth operation and we have in fact got a beautiful operation here it's nice and smooth there's no noises coming out of it it is immaculate We've got beautiful new bearings in there okay so what we can do now is go ahead and tighten it up get the two and a half mil and you want this quite tight it is only into plastic it's not going to come loose but just want to ensure that that gasket is getting pulled down Like so, work our way around. Get them all nice and even.
that's it beautiful get another last final check over all right and that is ready to go in ready to go back in the car so we'll get this grease out of the way we'll get the bearings out of the way nice and clean rear differential for your x-max okay let's begin the install so now what i've done here with the rebuild is i want to make sure that there's no dirt and muck that i'm introducing into it so giving the, the housing a really good wipe down and it's at this point as well where i will use the the vaseline lubrication around the casing to ensure i get a good seal won't be permanent but it definitely won't hurt keep dust and, and muck out of there okay that's going to help our gears and our bearings last a heck of a lot long all right so i'll get my gizmo here got my petroleum jelly go ahead and get this one just done the mating services you don't have to to pack it with grease i'm definitely just putting it on the the ceiling surfaces where the two where the plastic cases meet like so you can see they give you a nice recess where the two cases meet beautiful okay so a little bit like that now i'm going to pick up the truck and have a look in the case itself so just bear with us okay so here's the truck and here is the gearbox i'm not sure if we can get right in there and have a look but we don't want any any more dirt or debris in there so i'm going to give it a good old clean out with my dirty rag making sure that there's no muck in there looking really good okay now this is where the last grease is going to come into play that we haven't really used yet and that is my copper grease and that is really good for getting on the gears taking some of the the shock load out of the the mesh itself um, and helping us helping our gears last for a long time so i'm just going to put that on each and every tooth of the gear mesh and this is going to ensure like i said to keep the temperatures down keep the car nice and quiet hopefully help the gears last as long as possible go ahead here can just put it in you probably don't need to put it in every a good a good third will do i say of your crown wheel i've put it all in the pinion and that will work its way around like so okay now i can go ahead and put diff the newly rebuilt diff unit back in the back of the car so it's as simple as sliding that in making sure the bearings are aligned which is quite hard to do on camera putting in the case beautiful smooth operation okay now we can go ahead and put our cover screws back in and get this bad boy back together out there blasting around okay here we go And it doesn't matter that a little bit of the grease that I've put on the, the 
the gearbox case itself has, has squeezed out that means that we've got ourselves a good seal it's not going to let any dirt dust and rubbish inside that freshly rebuilt gearbox okay doing up all these screws again i'm just taking up the slack getting the making sure the covers on nice and straight like so and then we'll start working our way around the cover inspecting to make sure all the gaps are taken up a little bit of oil Oh, sorry, a little bit of the, the sealing grease has come out. Which indicates that the surface areas are all mating. And sitting nice and snug. There we go. Now it's a case of putting the rear bumper bar and wheelie bar assembly on. I'll start this upside down okay here is the rear skid plate slide that in I'll do these four screws up I'll just do it in exactly the reverse order that we took it apart getting it all sitting nice before I go ahead and put screws in put these bottom ones in first you can see by the skid plate how much work this car's had it's actually due for a new one and it does a great job of exactly that protecting the chassis the bottom of the car and the gearbox cases from any substantial damage or impacts that we tend to throw at these trucks here we go coming back together two side screws in typical traxxas just going together so easily while I've got it upside down I'll take the opportunity to put the wheels on put the body on and we are done okay, put our tires on the right di direction can give it a quick spin make sure that it's all nice and smooth definitely feels a lot different than it did before you can tell that it's definitely freshly serviced and full of defoil like I said 60,000 has gone in the back of this one tighten up the wheel nut tighten up this wheel nut and we are set to go bashing got a beautiful diff action there across the axle no noise beautiful gear mesh new bearings now I can put the body on and call this one done okay so I'm Brett from Hearns and today we rebuilt the rear differential on the Traxxas X-Max thanks for watching <laughs>